Hey guys, I haven't done a video in a while, so I thought I would do one. Yeah, my hair's a lot longer than it used to be. <laughs> I've been letting it grow out. I think it needs to go away. But uh, yeah, so my uh, D700 radio, uh, I can't remember if I did a video on replacing the uh, EE prom that went out in it or not. Um, that happened last year, and uh, I had to go in. What, what was what would happen with it is the uh, radio would turn on, everything would operate, but if anything happened, if you changed any set, you changed the volume control, you change the frequency, you touch any buttons, uh, if it receives an APRS packet, anything that it had to commit to memory, it would lock up and then power off. And uh, so after, you know, fooling with it a little bit, I figured out that that was the pattern. You know, any, you know, I uh, uh, built a special cable for it, put it on the workbench. Nothing's wrong with the cabling. Everything was fine. Um, that's the thing. That's the symptom that I noticed. Uh, so what I did is I hooked up Logic Analyzer and uh, checked the EEPROM that's uh, in the radio itself, and sure enough, um, one of the lines would stay high after uh, something was written in memory, and that's it, then it would shut down. Replace the EEPROM uh, with a questionable one off of eBay, and uh, it started working again. And then, you know, uh, same thing started happening again. Well, not, not the same thing. Uh, the radio itself shut down. Um, and would not power on uh, about a year later. And I couldn't figure out what, what's going on with this thing. It's like it, you know, it should be working. Like right now, uh, I have the radio powered up. And um, it does not power on, as you can see right here. Um, what I found is that that is a fuse that um, goes to the control head and uh, part of the power on process requires that there obviously be power to the control head for it to turn on um, and that 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 did not work um, so i checked no power on one side of it uh, power on the other check the resistance across it and it's an open it's a fuse. Uh, I think it's fuse 902. And uh, if you jump her across it, the radio will power on. Look at that. You know, amazing. And remove the jumper, and it, and it turns off. So... What I'm going to do is remove this fuse and um, replace it with uh, one that I bought off of Amazon. Well, like 20 of them. There are two amp fuses, uh, three millimeter. Um, I think they're 1206 size, whatever that is. Uh, they were like 20 bucks, something like that. I'm going to turn the the flow down really low on my uh, air solder station here. Heat all of that up. I'm going to be very careful about this. Move that guy off of there. Looks good. Set this down for a moment.
little bit of solder on there. And uh, put this little tiny fella right there on there. See if we can get that all lined up the way that it's supposed to be. Not, I am not an expert at this uh, this stuff at all. There we go. Looks like that uh, that may have soldered into place. Let's hope so. Here, spin up the fan there, pull that off. And I would imagine this would solidify by the time the uh, soldering iron turns itself off. Not entirely certain I'm happy with that, but I guess we'll see. Yep, that looks like that soldered into place. These are the, uh, the fuses that I bought. And strip like this. Twenty of them, eight bucks. You need one of these. Contact. Me. All right. Uh, looks like we're pretty close to being done with uh, the uh, air there. Hopefully that noise isn't too loud. And uh, what I'm going to do now? Power it on. See if it works. Hey, look at that. We got a radio. And something I did as a part of um, trying to figure out what was going on with this thing. First thing I did, it, you know, it's like reset it. Reset didn't work. Um, I then did a uh, full reset. And unfortunately, with a full reset, um, it destroys all of the settings in the radio. Um, or maybe that was whenever I replaced the heat pump. Um, and you have to go through the whole um, calibration process. You got to calibrate the S meter. You got to set the uh, uh, squelch points. You got to you got to do everything. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I have to do that. Maybe I'll do a, a, a video on that if I have to. Um, but this is just a, a, a real easy fix. Um, I was lucky. I have a friend that also has a D700. Uh, I took the radio and control head over to his house, and we swapped radios and control heads, and that's how I was able to determine that the problem was with it inside the radio itself, uh, and not in the uh, not in the control head uh, yeah it was just a blown fuse so uh, 
Hopefully, I don't have a short in my cable in the car. You know, uh, that could be problematic. Um, if that's the case, then I'm going to the cable and, and run a new one. But, um, yeah, so uh, this is the second time, two times, that I uh, brought this thing back from the dead. Anyways, uh, thanks, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you later.